Do you know you have wings? We all do. And there's a great quote that says, until you learn to spread your wings, you'll have no idea how far you can fly. Now, I was never a big fan of metaphors until this one of wings and of flying really stuck with me. And it started on March 11, 2013, when I lost my big sister. This is her pictured here, Navy Lieutenant Valerie Capillaire Delaney. Val, as most called her, made the ultimate sacrifice at the age of 26 years old when the Navy fighter jet she was piloting crashed during a low-level flight mission in eastern Washington state. Now, I am not a pilot, and I'm not in the military, but I looked up to my big sister my whole life. We were two years apart. Val was the typical rebellious middle child of three girls, and we were really close. Now, don't be too fooled by that pretty face here, because let me tell you, Val was tough. I watched, from ground level, of course, Val's journey towards the sky as she achieved her dream of becoming a Navy fighter pilot, something that still not many women do. As her younger sister, I looked up to her, and I admired her for so many things. But three things specifically stand out to me. How she fearlessly reached forward for role models and mentors. How she selflessly reached behind to support and encourage others. And how she relentlessly persevered through adversity, using her favorite motto, adapt and overcome. Now, you'll hear more about those later. But the true testament of Val's lasting legacy became evident by a collection of wings from female aviators around the world. I'm going to share with you the story of these wings, and I want for us to imagine what they represent individually and collectively and metaphorically. Using examples from Val's life and from within the female aviation community, my hope is that we can all learn to spread our own wings and to let our dreams take flight. Every pilot remembers the day they earned their coveted aviator wings. These small uniform tokens represent the enormous effort and sacrifice necessary to complete the rigorous training required to become a, a military aviator. Val earned her wings of gold in February of 2012 and then she traded them in for her angel's wings just a year later. Right before her funeral, a few of her friends came together with this idea to give their aviator pins as a symbol of their presence. What started as a simple Facebook message transformed overnight into a message thread of several hundred female aviators around the world who started sending in their wings from all ranks and branches within the military, from complete strangers. These wings just started flying in, each neatly wrapped in with personal notes. And while may, it may theoretically be easy for these women to replace their uniform pins, it's impossible for us to replace the meaning behind these small tokens which we could physically see in some of the wings that were clearly well-worn. Some were made of 14 karat gold, and some had engravings on the back. At her funeral, our family was presented with two long jump straps full of nearly 200 sets of wings. In a letter, her friends who had coordinated this explained how, as a minority and as the youngest generation of junior officers, they understand that their success depends on the support they give each other. They know that they have to reach forward for role models and mentors and also reach back to support and encourage others coming behind them. And they felt like Val embodied that more than anyone. And they explained how, individually, these wings represent amazing personal accomplishment. And together, they celebrate the strength of all female aviators. This completely blew us away. Even the women who started this were just as shocked as we were with how organically this all evolved. To me, it was just so overwhelming 
to see how one death sparked one idea of one selfless action that was then replicated and magnified within an entire community to produce such a powerful and symbolic result. These wings are on display at the Women's Memorial at Arlington National Cemetery as part of a Wings for Val exhibit. And more wings get added each year. It's absolutely incredible if you ever get the chance to check it out. In experiencing this whole phenomenon, it really motivated my family and me to create the Wings for Val Foundation so that we could honor my sister's legacy by continuing this cycle of support for women in aviation. So far, we've given out four scholarships to help offset the financial burden of private flight training for promising young women earning their pilot's wings. Thank you. And it's been amazing, but beyond just supporting women in aviation, I want to be able to use my sister's story to support and inspire and empower future generations of female leaders in any field. In the same way that I've been inspired in my own field of public health and nutrition, which has nothing to do with aviation. So I want to go back and I want to revisit those three characteristics that Val embodied and that are exemplified within the female aviation community that I believe can apply to all of us as we dare to soar to great heights. So the first is to reach forward and using that flight lingo, fly high on the wings of your heroes. Val dreamed big throughout her childhood and she always took the most challenging route ultimately deciding in high school shortly after 9-11 to follow in the footsteps of our grandfather and great uncle who served in the military and as pilots. At each juncture within the Naval Academy and at flight school, Val never hesitated to reach out to women ahead of her for support and guidance as she navigated difficult decisions and the unique day-to-day -day challenges of being one of very few females in military aviation. Val risked it all for the opportunity to fly and to serve our country. And she always acknowledged the women ahead of her who first made it possible for her to be able to do so. And it's interesting that for women in American military aviation, this dates back really as far back as World War I, but especially in World War II with the Women Air Force Service pilots, the WASP, who first blazed the trail but also fought for decades to get the appropriate recognition and benefits as veterans. It really wasn't until the 1970s that the military officially opened flight training for women, but their flying was limited to non-combat missions, and that didn't change until 1993. So it really hasn't been that long, and still to this day, the Navy reports that less than 9% of all aviators are women. So I think what we can learn here from, from Val and from these female aviators is that it takes a lot of courage to set a lofty goal, to stretch outside of our comfort zone, to ask for help, but also be fearless in blazing our own trail. Because at the end of the day, no one's going to do the work for you. So I want you to think about how you can fly forward on the wings of your heroes. How can you reach ahead to find inspiration and role models and mentors to help you achieve your big goals? So as you're, you're, you're learning to spread your wings and you're soaring along your own unique flight path, there will be opportunities to use your wings. And so the second key point here is to reach behind and use your wings to help others. Val had the opportunity to deliver a sermon to a church she belonged to in Texas in 2010. And she told the congregation, we have all been given special gifts that are meant to be shared. I try to remind myself often that it's not about me, and when I do, I feel my life becoming larger, that the possibilities are endless. Val chose a life of service to our country, but she also served her friends and family on a daily basis especially through her phone calls and handwritten letters and care packages. 
when she played Division I lacrosse at the Naval Academy, I can tell you she was nowhere near the best player on that team, but she enthusiastically supported her teammates and, and served as the heart of her team, even from the bench. In the same way that the female aviators ahead of Val had reached back to support and encourage her throughout her flight training process, Val always looked for opportunities to take her classmates and teammates under her wings to support and encourage them. And I think this is really the kind of support system that these female aviators rely on to survive and to succeed within their challenging field. So how are you currently using your wings to help others? And what more can you do to reach behind to help support and inspire someone else coming behind you? You know, this is definitely an ongoing process with this underlying tension, I think, between being fearless in pursuit of your own wings, while at the same time also being selfless in helping someone else find their wings. And we need to be able to do both. Finally, we have to be prepared to face adversity in our lives. And so the motto I want you to remember here is adapt and overcome. Val picked up this motto during a summer pr uh, training program with the Marines in 2009, and I was the first in our family to experience Val's obsession with her newly found motto when we took a sister spring break trip together down to the Grand Canyon. At the start of our trek, all the way down to the bottom and back up the next day that Val had planned, I started fumbling with my camelback water backpack, and I, and I couldn't get the mouthpiece to work, and I'm like fretting that I'm not gonna be able to have water during our whole, whole trip down there. And Val was getting so impatient and just barked at me, Allie, adapt and overcome, let's go. And then she continued to say this phrase to me probably 17 more times over the next 24 hours anytime I would complain or something would go wrong. I wanted to push her off the side of the canyon at times. <laughs> But we made it through, and her motto definitely stuck, so much so that in a book put together at my bridal luncheon, filled with thoughtful marriage advice, what do you think Val wrote? Allie, adapt and overcome. Love Val. Talk about good marriage advice. <laughs> so I think that this motto and this mentality really allowed Val to persevere through some really challenging obstacles in pursuit of her dream to fly. As a kid, she was teased for being overweight and wearing glasses. She didn't actually get into the Naval Academy the first year she applied and had to attend a year of prep school. And once she was in uh, flight school, she actually had to get corrective eye surgery before she qualified for flight training. And then even once she became a pilot, she battled to prove herself every day based on merit and not on gender. She could have given up at any point but instead she persisted and grew stronger in the face of these setbacks, ultimately becoming the rock within our family as our mom suffered through a breast cancer diagnosis and our older sister lost her first baby to genetic disease at eight months old. Val sometimes made it look easy, but her journey was anything but. And I'm realizing it's the same for all these women aviators who demonstrate how Resiliency is critical to success. And then I'm also up here saying you don't have to be a fighter pilot to face and overcome adversity in your life. So think about the hardships that you're facing and how might you be able to apply this adapt and overcome mentality to rise above the challenges that life's gonna put in your path and keep moving forward towards achieving your dreams and, and finding your purpose. When the female aviators presented their wings to our family, they closed their letter by saying, we leave our wings with Val and we carry her with us in the sky. I know that my sister's spirit continues to soar high within the aviation community and in the lives of all those her story has touched through the Wings for Val Foundation. To my family, Seeing big V's in the sky made by airplane contrails or migrating birds is our visible reminder that Val is always with us, guiding and inspiring our lives and our work. And it's all started to click for me recently that 
It's no coincidence that birds fly in a V formation when they migrate. Scientists have shown that being connected in this pattern helps give the birds the extra lift and energy needed to make it to their destination. They have to synchronize the timing to get this whole phenomenon right, and they even take turns of, of who's the lead bird in that formation. Could our collection of the 200 wings for Val be an example of how the female aviation community was working in a V formation to bring extra lift and energy to each of its individual members? I gave you instances of how my sister reached forward, reached behind, and adapted and overcame. But each one of those sets of wings represents another woman with her own unique story for how she's also reached forward, reached behind, and adapted and overcame. And when brought together in formation, the collective strength and impact of that community is far greater than the sum of those individual women and their stories. How could we come together with others to produce this same result in our own communities, our homes, our workplaces? told you at the beginning how I was never really a big fan of metaphors, but can you now see why I just couldn't let this one go? I, I live it and I breathe it every day, and I hope that you're able to find some special meaning in it for your life as well. Building off of that quote I mentioned at the, at the start, I am now convinced that when we have the courage to spread our wings, and to use them to help others. Just like those birds and the female pilots, we can fly further together than we ever could on our own. Thank you. Thank you.